Live from the O'Brien Services Stadium Studios, this is the fifth quarter. Welcome into another edition of the fifth quarter. I'm Tanner Barth, joined alongside by Joe Catanacci as we get ready for another jam-packed night of high school football and Joe, some big-time matchups around the Cape Fear that we had our eyes on. Well, we are in the thick of the Mid-Eastern Conference and conference schedules across uh, the southeastern part of North Carolina and all across the state. A couple of big games, obviously, tonight here in the Cape Fear. No bigger than down in Chalot between West Brunswick and Hoggard. That's our game of the week. Uh, New Hanover looking to continue their trend of uh, big wins inside league play as uh, they took on in-county rival Laney. South Brunswick Topsail looking to pick up their first uh, conference win of the season as well. And you said it right there. You know, speaking of that one, let's start with our fifth quarter game of the week. Let's go down to Shalot, shall we? A good one between these two. A lot of history tonight. The Hoggard Vikings hit the road to take on undefeated West Brunswick. This one got off to a good start. Jay Fletcher passes this one to Trey Bell in the flats. He throws it deep to Jordan Wilkes, and he says, get off me, young man, in for the score. Big touchdown there. Two defensively minded uh, teams moving in. It was going to be who is uh, cleaning uh, up the football the best. And as the Trojans get into the end zone, they're able to utilize the halfback pass. And then here around the corner, fast forward to the fourth quarter, and uh, Trey Bell is, makes it 14 0. He would score both touchdowns. That was 14 0. But here comes Hogger. They wouldn't go away without a fight. Gabe Johnson completes the pass to Chad Holler. Go ahead and holler at the young boy. In for the touchdown. Coach Hickman was not too happy about that one, but his Trojans would gain possession in the end. They take the knee to run out the clock. What a good win. West Brunswick beats Hoggard for the first time since 1997, 14-7, the final from Shalot. Thing that we showed tonight, this big time football's return to Shalot in terms of the environment. The crowd was incredible. Um, you know, I'd be interested to see what the final number is. The students showed up, the community showed up. Um, so, you know, it's big for the team, obviously, but every week's the season, we got to stay humble. We got to keep working. And what a win for West Brunswick. Another big test they passed tonight. You know, we talked about coming into the season, 24 seniors, how would they respond? They said, you know, we're going to be a favorite in this conference. They're showing it right now, Joe. Well, anytime you can uh, pick up a win against w one of those Wilmington schools, in particular, Hoggard and New Hanover. First time, as uh, Tanner mentioned, since 1997. That's a huge win for the program, a huge win for the community throughout Chalote and uh, for West Brunswick to do that, making a statement that they're there to be at the top of the Mid-Eastern Conference here as this schedule progresses. And you talked about a big win for the community. Now let's continue on with some of those other Mid-Eastern Conference games. Let's go up to Leland, North Brunswick, hosting the Ashley Screaming Eagles. Eagles trying to pick up win number one on the year, but you know North Brunswick, no small task. And the Scorpions came out tossing the rock from the get-go. It's Levin Lindbert way downfield, has a man, and it's Tate Davis. Almost fakes out our cameraman, and he would rumble deep into Ashley territory. North Brunswick wastes no time punching it in. Mike Michael Henderson Jr. Yeah, straight ahead and he's in for the score. The Scorpions jump out to the lead, but here's Ashley not going away without a fight. Logan Peter puts the Eagles on the board, connecting with Barrett Swales for the score. But the Scorpions at the end of the day was too much to handle for the Screaming Eagles. Yep, Logan Teeter got that touchdown pass in this kickoff return right here. It's Cameron Mapson finding a hole. He can kiss this young man goodbye. The junior takes it all the way to the house. This one all North Brunswick tonight at home. 57 to 7, the final score. All right, let's head out to Bucktown. Uh, we've got Laney hosting the always dangerous and high flying New Hanover Wildcats. Uh, pick it up in the third quarter. Laney down 17, going for it on fourth down. Jordan Cole drops it off to Eli Rivera, but he cannot reach the pylon. It's a turnover on downs, and, and you yeah. know the Wildcats offense. You do. Here we go. Checking back at this, and it's Chase Nixon way downfield. Beautiful ball hits Jaheen Jojo Marshall in stride, and you can forget about it. He would go in for the touchdown to extend the lead. Landy just trying to look for answers, but this young man had a few. It's Owen Daffer. This is a 45-yard field goal kick. It probably would have knocked it in for much further, maybe even 60 yards to extend the new Hanover lead to 27 late in the ball game. Then it's the Hanover defense. They've been good all year long. Force a turnover here late in the fourth quarter. This one, all Wildcats tonight, 34-7, to the final from Bucktown. And let's go from Bucktown 
up to Topsail High School. The Pirates hosting South Brunswick. Both teams winless in the conference and an interesting start in the first quarter. You know turnovers will kill you. Topsail forced a punt on a three and out high in over in punt. Almost lost it in the sky. So does the return man. Bobbles it. It's recovered by Topsail with great field position. Well, special teams, the third facet of the game. You got to tie things up in that facet uh, of any type of contest. and. Uh, here we go. Top's able to take advantage. Cody Wallace with the deep fade to Gavin Ellis, the playmaker over the shoulder, grabs it for the score. Seven nothing Topsel. Pirates student section loving the action. Fast forward second quarter, pinned deep in their own territory, and guess who? Wallace to Gavin Ellis. What a grab along the sideline, and that would lead to this. Another Jose Orellana connects on the field goal attempt. Uh, Topsel shuts out South Brunswick for the first conference win, 17 zip. They do get that win 17 to nothing, kind of a grinded out one. It was 10 nothing until, you know, a minute left to go into the ball game, but Topsell punches it in, and that's a win they have to have in the 3A side of this Mid-Eastern Conference. Well, both teams, you know, moving in, winless in the Mid-Eastern Conference. Something had to give uh, Topsell with that air attack. Cody Wallace at the quarterback position, able to take advantage of some mismatches there uh, along the sidelines in the passing game, and the Pirates able to pick up the shutout victory. Absolutely. We're through our first set of games tonight on the fifth quarter. Still so much more coming your way. We'll head out west for a little Three Rivers action.